Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is April and you are at Atypical Life. All right, you guys, so this week I am switching up my focus just a little bit. I wanna switch from the physical interior home space to the, tan the tangible goods. I wanna to switch to the digital. And this is a little bit harder to share in video format, um, but everyone I have talked to about this issue is also struggling. So let's give it a go. I have thousands of files and I know that many of you do too. I am an ex-photographer. I make YouTube videos. I have kids. I have pets. I think that every beautiful sunset needs to be photographed along with every rock mountain full moon and interesting dust bunny. Digital files are small so I try to overlook them but they do add up and the problem is, is they do interfere with my life. I've been staring at the red status bar warning for a long time on all of my devices. My computer often crashes when making videos because it doesn't have enough space to handle the files. Um, finding any sort of picture on my phone is a nightmare and it has so many files that when I do try to do some organization, it's so slow loading and transferring and everything's just crashing and slowing and ugh, it's awful. Um, how many times have I been on my way to a gathering and realized, oh my gosh, I don't have enough space left on my phone, so I need to do a quick delete so that I can have room for pictures. Not to mention the occasions that it's time to trade phones. I get a panic attack for a week trying to decide what am I going to do with all these files. Do any of you guys relate to this? Is this relatable? <laughs> I know it. I know that it has to be. So I really enjoy sharing my photos with my friends and family, and I do like to do like little nice projects for people. So being able to retrieve and find photos is a real concern for me. So how in the hello are we going to solve this problem of organizing thousands of photos? Okay, over the years, I've made some progress on this, and at one point I even had it under control. But when I started making videos, I also, around that, um, a little bit later I had a child, the amount of photos that I had tripled, quadrupled, a hundred oopled, and my system just failed. In the last few years, I've started to change my habits little by little, and I think that I've finally found a workable system for me. It's working for now, at least. And I just wanted to share with you, you guys some of the habits and organization that I'm using. So maybe it can help you as well, or at least inspire you to come up with a plan for yourself. I would like to put the disclaimer. I am not finished. The habit is a continual state. I'm always taking pictures. I'm always bringing in new files. I got really far behind, so I had to catch up. So I'm not caught up at this point, but I have made so much more progress that I feel comfortable telling you guys what I'm doing and thinking that some of the things that I'm doing will work for you too. So habit one, stay conscious of how many photos you are taking. Holding that shutter button to get to 100 photos per second sounds good until you have to sort. Think about your composition and take fewer photos. And ask yourself, do I really need to photograph this? If you notice and you go to a really professional like for photography studio or you get somebody who's constantly like really working photography, they're not taking a lot of photos. Like they set things up and they take photo. Why? Because sorting through all of those numerous photos is way too hard. And they know it takes up too much space, too much time because you're doing things over again. Habit two, delete photos. Immediately after an event or an outing or whatever, if you're traveling, especially if you're not driving or you're taking public transportation, make yourself go through the photos one time at least and then get rid of any that aren't great one of my issues is that on my phone things are so small i have terrible eyes so i love my eyes but i have tear like i don't see very well so seeing the images on my phone sometimes it's hard for me to see like the whole composition or like people everybody's facial expressions and things when i'm looking on my phone so but I can still go through and get rid of like, I can still go through and get rid of a good amount before I ever put them on the computer. Habit three, create a system and stick to it. I use an external hard drive for my photo storage and there's so many benefits to this, but you can get two terabytes of data for like less than $70 right now at Walmart. I just Googled it to see like how much it actually would cost. Less than $70 and even bother sorting <laughs> that's the that's the secret secret but if you want if you're like me and you want to be able to retrieve your photos 
Um, here, follow the rest of the video. But there are a lot of benefits to having a large hard drive. And one of them is that I occasionally take and make a copy of my hard drive. I'll just buy a new hard drive, make a copy of what I'm doing now, and I'll just take it to my storage box at the bank. I had a house fire 20-ish years ago, and the top five things that were absolutely devastating to lose and irreplaceable, one of them was pictures. You can also store important documents and other digital file files here. I really recommend this, and if you don't have a bank box, you can get a fire safe, and then you will always have those things on hand. Um, you can take pictures of your insurance policies and different things. I'm getting a little off topic, but just it is so great. Put it in the fire safe and you won't regret having that. Anyways, so that's the external hard drive. Um, habit four. Habit four is declutter, sort, and delete. This is the obvious one. Set aside some time. For me, I set aside 30 minutes to an hour every single week. Um, but this really wasn't enough time for me to get super caught up, but it has helped me tremendously just to kind of hold the line, not get super behind. Um, and make a little bit of progress towards where, where I want to be, which is everything done. <laughs> so what I try to do is like once or twice a year, I try to do what I call a big push. I don't really have a better name for it than that, but I've actually been doing it for the last 14 days. And that is where I'm just really focusing on photos. I'm trading out any um, not 100% necessary tasks and just focusing on photos. I was able to catch up on nine months worth of photos this time and make some seriously needed space on my computer and my phone. But depending on your needs, pick an amount of time that allows you to work on this every single week. Another good thing is like, when you're working on it every single week, you don't forget, you're not as likely to forget where you were at and have to kind of like spend most of your time getting back to that place. You know, you just write, jot it down on um, wherever you keep a note and just be like, I'm in this folder, this is the folder I'm working in, jot it down, and then when you come back to it a week later, you're not completely what is going on. In this, so in this time, in this 30 minutes, I declutter, sort, and delete. I ask myself, will I ever need this file again? What might I need it for? Is it really special? Do I have a hundred of these? But I also don't spend too long trying to declutter, and definitely don't do it if it's hard for you. Don't get caught up on this part because over time it will get easier, but also since digital files are so small, you're gonna be better suited to just put it in the folder it needs to be in and move on. Habit five, don't duplicate uh, photos or effort. So this definitely has two meanings. Um, one of the scenarios would be that I wanna make a Facebook post for my recent vacay. So I copy all my files to my desktop, which is where I prefer to work, as I mentioned before, I can't see on my phone, and I leave the photos on the phone. I would do my post, and then I would forget all about the duplication. Then a year later, I would get back to organizing and duplicate the files again. Then I would get distracted, and a few months would go by, I would forget where I was, and I might have forgotten where I was working, and the files, it, where even where the files were located, and then I might duplicate again. And then I would eventually find all the duplicated files and maybe or maybe not realize that they were duplications and start doing the work I had already done again. So even if I do realize and I don't start doing the same work again, I still have to deal with those photos again. The point is, I was wasting so much time doing that, but I'm also wasting the space that they had taken up for that amount of time. How much time and energy have I wasted in that scenario? And that was how I was like, that's how I was functioning. So, so had I just figured out my organization and I laid it out and I laid my process out and was doing the same exact thing every time, I wouldn't have wasted so much time and space. Habit six, mindless surfing. So if you find yourself mindlessly surfing the web on your phone, that would be a good time to be like photos. I should be looking at photos, photos and delete, photos and delete. It is also a good time to make folders on your phone, um, sort the files into folders. Kids practice, doctor's appointments, these are times I make a habit to use as photo declutter times. So after getting those habits in place, the most important thing to do now is lay out your organization and your process. Write it down, type it up, put it on a PDF, make a PDF of it, put those steps um, that you take on your hard drive so that they'll be right there on the, on the hard drive and if you forget what you're supposed to do with your photos, you can look it up. 
but don't feel like you have to write out the entire file map organization that I'm going to talk about with you now because once you create the organization of the files, it will be the same year after year unless you realize that you need to make some changes to it, in which that's a little, we'll talk about that in a minute. How to organize your photos. This is my example. First off, let's talk about your phones. If you have too many images in one folder, it's going to be incredibly slow moving when you try to transfer these files to anything else. So make folders on your phone. How I make my folders, what's working for me right now is I do like 2023 part one, which means January through June 30th, and then 2023 part two, which means July 1st through December 31st. All my photos that I'm taking right now go in 2024 part one. This keeps the folders small enough so it's not impossible to find what you're looking for, but large enough that I don't have a million folders, folders on my phone and I'm like, this goes here, this goes here, because that also is incredibly time consuming. So on the hard drive, or you can even do it on a memory card. You can do it on any kind of storage, okay? Or on your computer. <laughs> on the hard drive, you need to take a minute and plan the types of content that you usually have. My main folders and doc my main folders are documents, music, phone, photos, videos. Some files can fall into more than one category and sometimes if I have one that I find myself trying to duplicate, I'll create like a folder and label it with the direction. So in my, oh I meant to look this up before I filmed. In my YouTube videos, I have like a photos file and it says see video. I don't remember. I, I, I hate it, but I'll put the picture on the screen so that you can see it. Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember what it says, but it has the directions, like where, don't put the files in here, put them in this place. Um, docs, documents obviously are what I mentioned earlier. Most of you know what documents are, but copies of important stuff. Also, just anything that I really wanna keep that would likely be on paper. Some of my internal folders are history topics, ancestry, journaling, artwork, resumes, classwork. Music is a copy of my digital music library. Phone, this is where I typically dump my phone when it's time to get a new one. My goal is for this to be a temporary storage spot. It's usually not sorted, but you know, this is, this is what we're working on here, so. Um, photos, this is where we're gonna deep dive into this one in depth, so we'll come back to this. Videos is anything social media related, and I should probably change the name, but I knew what I meant, and yeah. Okay, photos, first category, professional versus personal. Most of you guys and myself even anymore, I don't really have to worry about the professional side. I don't, um, so, but if you do, if you do photography for money, you should sort of separate those from your personal. Personal, by year and or topic. The easiest part is yearly. Each year gets its own folder, and then topics. Let's talk about topics now. I have several recurring topics that I like to keep in their own folders. Some examples are photos of my garden, a decluttering folder. I like to photograph my treadmill screen to keep a documentation of my workouts, but these are typically things that I'm prone to either use for analyzing patterns of some sort, um, like the workouts. I really only reference these if I'm like having some kind of like workout related issue and I'm curious about what I was doing at a certain point in my life. You know, three years ago I was able to run four miles at this speed and now I'm running at this speed. You know, that, that kind of stuff. That's really the only reason I'm keeping it. Um, but it also keeps stuff like that that's just kind of boring out of the way of the more enjoyable images. Um, any, but any, but you get the point, any type of comparison type series, like decluttering is a good one, so I can see over the years what I've gotten rid of, ancestry, any old photos of my family that I'm lucky enough to acquire or get to take a picture of or find on the internet, um, or anything just interesting that I read and I just take a picture of it and put it on there. So I use photography as a way to do a lot of things in my life, if you're not, if, if you're not picking up on that yet. But I also have a random folder for myself, and then a kid random folder, and then a pet random folder. And these are all those cute snaps that you get on the daily of the cat sleeping in the window. Cat random folder. Kid snuggling a bunny. Kid random folder. Rando selfie or pic of your favorite person. My random folder. A lot of my images fall into the random folder, but then you need something for holidays, travel, things that aren't recurring, but that you might have taken a lot of photos at this specific time. And it should be in its own folder. You don't want to bog down your random folder with, I don't know, like I can take a couple hundred pictures while I'm on vacation. I don't, 
you know, I don't know if that's abnormal or not, but I can take, <laughs> I do take a lot of pictures. Um, also, anything that you are likely to retrieve by date, birthdays, concerts, vacations, but these folders are dated for me so that they stay in chronological order and then they're labeled exactly what they are. So it's nice because you can look at your year in a glance and you aren't only finding your photos, but you're keeping a document and a little bit of a history of your year and you can always just reference that there. The next thing I, so making adjustments. One of the reasons I feel like that we fail to organize sometimes is because we're scared of getting it wrong. And I think that that's what happened to me with the photos. Cause I'm like, if I do this and I do it wrong, I'll have to do it again. And I can't handle that. But I'm start after I did it, after I got started and I started just going with a system, I picked a system and I, or I created my system and I just committed to it. I realized that I am able to make adjustments and it's actually not that bad. So so sometimes when I'm sorting, I see that I need a new topic folder, or that I have a topic folder that I'm just not really using. And that's okay. Your system doesn't have to be perfect or exactly the same for every single year forever. So you can make the adjustment and then do the new thing from here on out. And that is mostly it. It's really, it is simple, but incredibly time consuming. And if I were starting just now and I had a whole backlog of stuff to do, I would start with the photos coming in right now and then set aside time to work from the recent past backwards until you're all caught up. It may literally take you years. It took, it has taken me years and I'm still nine months. I still have, no, I'm sorry. I still have 11 months of photos that are not sorted. So all of 2023 basically is not sorted yet. I'm, I've been working on this for years. But I only have one year left. <laughs> I've been working on this for years. Um, but I did just start the 30 minutes. I just started that in the last two, two years, I think. So I've only been really working on this for years. I had been intermittently like trying to figure out and spinning my wheels longer than that. So in the last two years, I've made really significant progress. So it really, it might take you years to get caught up, but doing some is better than not having any of it, right? Or you could just try it and see if it's working for you and start from here on out and leave the rest of the stuff, like I said, unsorted, put it on a hard drive and leave it unsorted. But it's just so worth it. It's so worth it to be able to retrieve the, the, to be able to use your stuff and do like fun Facebook posts or fun social media posts or fun gifts or I don't know, just different things. I just really enjoy it. I know the system isn't for everyone. I am a maximalist. I am not a minimalist. I know it's time consuming. Um, but I've not come across any sort of photo organization that is just not that way. I have not found the magic. Um, if you guys have it, let me know. But if keeping, otherwise, if keeping lots of photos is important to you, but you also want to be able to retrieve them and use them for things or just look back and enjoy them, this organization and these habits are working pretty well for me. And, and I feel comfortable sharing it with you. So let me know how you handle massive amounts of digital clutter, um, especially photography. And I'm always looking for ideas to improve. I'm not done growing yet. Um, and that's really, that's all I have for today. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.